Colin Frono's photo. Dot com and we are here with the first release right out of beta of Adobe Lightroom 4. So for the past, I guess it was almost two months, they've had a beta release of Lightroom 4 and I didn't download it yet because I didn't want to start editing photos in there and then switch later when it was time to make the change. So the upgrade is really easy. And for those of you who don't have Adobe yet or Lightroom at this point and have been waiting to purchase something because Adobe Lightroom used to be $300, it's now down to 149 for a new version. And if you are upgrading, it's only 79 bucks, which is a really, really, which is inexpensive for me, I think, to make that upgrade. So this morning, I made the upgrade to Lightroom 4. I went onto their website. I downloaded the upgrade. Uh, and for those who, are wondering if they don't have their code, their Lightroom 3 code that you have to type in, it pretty much automatically does that for you. You put in your new code that it comes with Lightroom 4, and then it automatically knew that I had my Lightroom 3 code in there. So I didn't have to worry about going and searching for that because it was already in my system. So it was really easy to download, didn't take terribly too long, and the upgrading process of doing my catalog, like upgrading my Lightroom 3 to Lightroom 4 catalog only took a couple minutes, five, 10 minutes, and then that was done, ready to go. And the one thing I encountered was I didn't, my photos weren't showing up. So all I did was reset Lightroom and everything was fine. My photos were there and we were ready to go. So I'm just diving in right now to see the difference in the develop module. So I figured I would pick a file that is something that I wanted to edit. We'll edit it here and I'll do an edit in Lightroom 3 and then we'll put them together and see if we can even tell a difference. Uh, but again, the point when you upgrade to a new, you know, when something goes from Lightroom 3 to Lightroom 4, the technology keeps getting better in the raw editing process. That's the importance of shooting raw is the fact that I used Lightroom 1 and before Lightroom was even out, I was using Adobe Bridge and, and editing uh, Adobe Camera Raw over in Photoshop. And what's great is that I have files from 2003 that I can bring back in nowadays into Adobe Lightroom 4 and tweak them with more power than I could back in the day. That's the cool thing about having RAW is you can always go back to that file uh, and upgrade to the latest technology that we have here, which is a Lightroom 4. So here we are in Adobe Lightroom 4. I've got this file and this is an image that I want, would want to go black and white with. So I go and I go boom, black and white. And you know me, I like to hit my contrast. There it is. They move the contrast. It's right below exposure now. So I usually go like that. I like to 100 those out. That's, my, that's what I tend to do. Bump my exposure slightly. And then where things get a little different is where the black levels, which I would probably go to next, I used to slide them to the, the right. Well, it doesn't exactly do what it used to do. So now I slide the black. You can slide them to the left to get what you're looking for. So I don't, I'm not going to go too far yet with that. I'm going to put it right here. Uh, then you've got this slider for whites. Watch, let's see what happens. We slide it to the right. The white areas get brighter. We slide it to the left. They get less, well, basically they don't brighten up. So you have control over that shadow area. You can see this is kind of like fill light. They took Mr. Phil out of here and, or sorry, Dr. Phil. They took him out of there and now you can see what happens with your shadows. I think this is a much cleaner look than with fill light. Um, it doesn't go over the top as extreme. When you get to this point, it's pretty extreme, but I could probably fill, <laughs> fill, I could probably make this better by just bumping the black levels here and making it work. So you still have that, that is pretty cool. So basically what's going on here is you have more control over your files, at least that's what I think. You've got more subtle control over the tones and what you wanna do here. Uh, so I had something pre-saved right here that I did and I like it. You also have this highlights. You can see what's happening just by watching. I'm blowing the highlights out and then you wanna pull back. You can go all the way down to this and the dark area, it, it kinda of grays out the image which is less of what I like to do. I like to keep it nice and punchy, nice and contrasty. Uh, I don't like the fact that this light is blowing out but if I really wanted to, I could go in there and, and tweak that individually. But, I, you know, I'm pretty happy with this file right where this is. So this is kind of just a simple preview of what I did in the develop module. There's a lot more to go through here. Uh, I also switched to strong contrast down here in my tone curves because I like strong contrast. So you just have to get used to what's going on in this control panel on the right-hand side. Um, so you'll notice when you 
bring in your older files that you've already made corrections to, you can up date them to the latest edit. So if you, you know, haven't delivered your files yet that you've already done, uh, I mean, I don't have a problem re-editing the files or tweaking them or seeing where, where I can take them. So it's not a big deal for me to go in and re-edit. But if you were working on, say, a wedding and you already edited 400 pictures, you may not want to update those files at this point unless you want to see what it's gonna ha what's going to happen. I would export them and save them uh, as JPEGs or something for going to print if that's what you were going to do and then upgrade it so that you can see what new tweaks you can do and maybe there's something cool you could bring out of each file or you could just individually select a file that you want to tweak and go ahead and tweak that one file yourself. So there's a lot of things you can do but I am not I don't have a problem upgrading to Lightroom 4 at this point which I just did. I'm not worried that it's the dot, you know 4.0. There will be updates so we'll constantly stream out. What I am most excited about is that it has uh, Nikon D4 support, it has D800 and D800E support at launch, even with those cameras not even out yet. So that's pretty cool, and I guess it's a good thing the Nikons were delayed a little bit because if you didn't, ha if they weren't delayed and you got them early, you wouldn't have been able to open the RAW files in Adobe Lightroom. You would have had to use Capture NX. So there you have that. Let me just go into Lightroom 3 and export this same exact file, put them together on a screen side by side for you, and then we can see if there's much of a difference from LR3. And, and on so the right, we've got the LR4 exported JPEG from the same file. Now again, I haven't had much time to spend with this. I just wanted to put out my first thoughts about what I see as different. You know, I, and I don't see advancement of technology and, and changes to be something to complain about. And I know a lot of people out there when things change or are kind of worried to adapt to it. Now, I'm not too worried about it. It's going to take a little bit of time to get used to the new type of editing, but I'm sure it's going to be better. I'm sure there's certain tweaks that we're going to like and we're going to discover as we move forward. So this is pretty cool. Let's just dive into this image and see if we see much of a difference. Um, now, I don't know how you're supposed to compare them other than putting them side by side and pixel peeping, which isn't something that we normally or I normally do. But the one on the right in LR4 just in this section seems to have, I don't know what it seems to have, honestly. <laughs> now that you know, you sit here and you look at this stuff and you go, I don't know. Why am I going to pixel peep this? I'm sure both could be good and one could be, I, I, I guess right in here, it looks like this is a little whiter. There's more highlights brought out where this has more of a gray tone. Now I'll put both of these files up for you full res to look at and tell me whatever you think you, you know, you see in it. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, what I look for in a black and white image of my, for myself, it looks like here the tones are much thicker. Uh, more contrast, which is what I look for in an image. Now, whether that's the tweak that I'm doing in Lightroom 4 versus Lightroom 3, I, I don't know because they're, you don't have the same sliders. So it looks like what I'm looking at right now on the right, that there's the bottle looks sharper and crisper and the, the tones look thicker. And I like thick tones. And on the right, it looks a little more on a flattened out level. So maybe with the extra sliders that you have over in LR4, you're able to tweak the file, well, even better. I mean, that's what you would expect, having extra sliders to have independent control over more things. Where you had one slider that did it on the, on the Lightroom 3, you'd have a few extra ones for Lightroom 4 to have more independent control over making these changes. So what this shows, well, you, you guys can take a look at the files yourself and just take a look and see you know, this is a 6400 ISO file. You can take a look and see. Actually, you can see more detail right here above Jay's head. It looks crisper and cleaner and nice. Uh, whether one looks more grainy than the other, I'm not really sure. But I don't mind that. We're, we are zoomed into like 100% or something along those lines. But look at, the, look at the detail in the sofa over here. I like the contrast. The, the separation that you're getting, you can see details in the black and on the metal of the, of the sofa. It looks good. I like this. I like that separation you're getting right there. So to me, that looks good. There looks to be more defined detail in the towels, the wall, the brick. And let's move all the way over to the dark area here. And both of these were done on strong contrast. So I think it's a toss up in this area, what we're looking at. Let's look at those camels. Looks pretty similar there. And we'll look at Martin and Jay here. Martin, or JP, Martin, his face looks pretty cool here. Uh, nice tones. Actually, they look nice and sharp to me where it doesn't look as 
thick and sharp on the other side on the Lightroom 3. So I'll put all these files up for you, but this is just a first look at the develop module. I've got a lot of learning to do uh, to figure out all of the different things that are, ha have been put into Lightroom 4, but there you have it. That's just a quick look, not so quick, but a quick look at Lightroom 4, how to download it, how to update it, things to look out for, and you can check these files out on the website, Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. Be sure to sign up for your free photo guide, a guide to capturing motion in low light. You can do that on fronosphoto.com. That will get you onto the email list where you'll get all the latest information and probably some discount codes as we go forward. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube as well, and we will see you later.